John, the author of this gospel, is doing something very specific in telling us that Mary supposed Jesus to be the gardener. Here is Jesus, the reversal of Cain, the fulfillment of Abel, and the last Adam. The gardener is back on the earth. So John tells us when Jesus died, they didn't just lay him in a tomb somewhere. They didn't just lay him in a grave somewhere. It was a specific location that they placed him because when Jesus died, it wasn't just a great man dying and it wasn't even just the son of God dying. It was God's seed dying. And so God said, when you lay him in the ground, make sure you put him in the garden because in Jesus I'm going back to the beginning and I'm giving everybody somebody say everybody I'm giving everybody the opportunity for a new start Woo, I came to tell somebody on this Easter Sunday what Easter means for you is that you get an opportunity at a new genesis. You might have turned your garden into a waste place. You might have dried it up and ruined it. You might have killed everything you were called to keep, but on Easter, the gardener shows back up in your life. On Easter, the gardener walks back into your desert place on Easter, the gardener walks back into your life and says, I'm here to restore what you were called to keep. I believe there are people under the sound of my voice that you feel like your future has been compromised because of your inability to keep what God gave you. But I want to tell you there's a gardener in the house today. There's a gardener in our midst today. And just like Mary, if we'll turn to him and open up our hearts, there's no dead places he's afraid to go. The good thing about our gardener is he's already been to the back of the tomb. He's already stayed there three days and three nights. He knows his way out of the grave. So you don't need to say, don't come in my dead places. Jesus says, I've already been there. The gardener knows the way back to life.